Hello folks, uh, I hope this video finds you well. I'm, I'm not even sure when it will be aired. Um, I guess some Wednesday, it doesn't really matter, I guess. But um, uh, it's, it's, I'm glad uh, you were able to join me. And um, today I'd like to uh, talk uh, from the book of Hosea, uh, one of the Old Testament prophets. And his message is quite similar to the Isaiah's and the Jeremiah's. A lot of consistency with these guys, even though they may be preaching around the same time, somewhat different times, different kingdoms, the message from the Lord is very consistent. And that is a, a word of coming judgment. In this case, um, it would be from the Assyrians because uh, Hosea's word is probably for both kingdoms, but his focus is more on the northern tribe of Israel, which he refers to as Ephraim or Jacob. Uh, often in this in this book uh, and the sins are similar uh, injustice um, not taking care of the widows um, not taking care of the orphans um, the middle class are being taken advantage of um, the the love and faithfulness has has waned uh, greatly but yet it is God who maintains his but it's interesting and many of you are familiar with this story in the early chapters he asks um, Hosea uh, to take a wife, Gomer, uh, and they have children together, but Gomer is not faithful to him. Uh, she is someone that continues to go and sleep around and play the prostitute, and uh, but yet he is still loving and devoted to her. And at one point he says to her, uh, Roxanne, you don't have to turn on the red light. He doesn't really say that, but some of you might recognize that song. Anyway, but it is, it's a tough relationship, and this is under God's command to do this in order to demonstrate the relationship between he, the faithful husband, and Israel, the unfaithful spouse. Uh, and it's, it's quite a, he's not just preaching this, he actually, he actually does it. And it's quite remarkable, but the Lord wants to get his point across. And it's a very good way to do it. Let me... Um, if we could, uh, if you could open your Bibles to Hosea chapter 6, Hosea chapter 6, and I'm going to read verse 4 through 7. And it says, What shall I do with you, O Ephraim? What shall I do with you, O Judah? Your love is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. In other words, it's there and then it's gone. It's not steadfast. Therefore, I have hewn them by the prophets. I have slain them by the words of my mouth. That correction always comes from the Lord because of his love for us. And my judgment goes forth as the light. Verse 6 says, For I desire a steadfast love and not sacrifice, the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. But like Adam, they transgressed the covenant. There they dealt faithlessly with me. So in verse 6, he says he desires a steadfast love and the knowledge of God <clears throat> rather than a burnt offering, rather than a ritual, rather than this, this ritualistic sacrifice. He wants this knowledge. Now, in, in the Hebrew, this knowledge is referred to as yada, Y-A-D-A, yada. And it's not just an intellectual knowledge. Like, oh yeah, I know God, there's uh, Ten Commandments, and there's an Old Testament, and a New Testament. And, you know, no, this is a, a personal knowledge. This is a relationship. When he says knowledge, something he desires, he wants the relationship. And this is what he is speaking to the people through Hosea. Um, it's, it's not just knowing about God, but actually knowing God. This steadfast love and, and this relationship that is maintained between us and our Heavenly Father. Um, so when, when God is judging the nation of Israel for their sins of injustice um, and so forth, and, and even a uh, there was a the sacrifices were maintained. There was still the ritual. People are still going to temple and worshiping in that sense. But they're also going and worshiping uh, Baal or Baal, however you want to pronounce it. They're doing both things. And the Lord says that that, that um, 
being two-faced in a sense, that, uh, that being split in your devotion, that is not a steadfast love. That is not knowing me in an intimate relationship like I desire. That is not what's happening. That would not be demonstrated by what you're doing. And that is what he desires from his people. And that's what he desires from you and I. Now, um, this, is, this knowing God um, in that way, in a more personal relationship, that does not mean that it has to be casual. Uh, oh, yeah, me and God are buds. He knows I'm a mess. I can do whatever I want. He's got me covered, man. Uh, JC's in the house. No, it doesn't mean that it's casual. Uh, for example, you can have a great relationship knowing uh, your boss. Not knowing like in that other biblical sense. You know what I mean? But you know them well. But that does not mean that the level of respect that that boss-employee relationship has to be breached. Now, you may have a boss where it gets casual. You may hang out with them, go out for dinner sometimes, and that's okay. But you also know that when it's office time, he's the boss, you're the employer. You can maintain that and have a great relationship and, have a, and really know them. You know what they like, what they dislike. You know what they're going to ask you before they even ask for it. Um, that is something that is very desirable. But in, in God, even though our relationship um, is strong with him and it's close, um, there is still that reverence that is maintained. That's never lost, it never goes away. He is God, he is holy, and I am not. He is worthy, I am unworthy. That is always understood. And the more we grow into that and understand that, the more we know him in that way, we understand these things. And it's something that pleases the Lord. And it certainly does wonders uh, to our lives as well. For, uh, for example, we know uh, intellectually that God is um, um, omniscient. He's all-knowing. Uh, there's nothing that comes by his know about. And you could come to Sunday school class and we could say, is God uh, omniscient, yes or no? And you say, that's true. And intellectually you understand that. But knowing it relationally means that when there is a difficult situation, when there's a decision to make, when there is uh, some trouble going on, you know that God knows. In that relationship, that is very assuring to us. Um, with things going on in the world and in our country, with things going on in your home, in my home, in our churches, in our communities, we can trust and rely upon him because we know, we yada, that he knows everything. There's nothing getting past him, whether we should take that job, whether we should move, uh, whether we should um, uh, get a vaccine, whether we should, uh, you know, whatever it is, we know that he knows. God is omnipresent. We know that intellectually, but relationally, we understand that he is with us everywhere and in everything. So that changes our lives. Our behavior is different because of that. Whether we do something in public, whether we do something privately, whether we think everybody knows or nobody knows, we know that the Lord is with us. We know that in difficult times, in perilous times, when we're fearful, we know that he is with us. We know that that attribute of God, we know him personally and we understand that he is with us. We know that he is uh, omnipotent. He is all powerful. There's nothing that he can't handle. So knowing that in that relationship that we have with him, we don't have to worry. Uh, there's no weapon that's formed against us that can prosper because he is greater. So even looking at world events, whether it's the Chinese or the Russians or the Americans, whatever's going on that may be coming against us, uh, people in our workplace, people in our families that lie and manipulate and cheat and steal, and often we're the victim of that. We know that God in his presence, his knowledge, his power, he has us covered. 
And that is how the Lord wants us to know him. We don't need to rely on other nations like the Egyptians, like uh, Israel did. Um, we don't need to rely on government, even our jobs. We are relying upon him because we know that we know that we know that he is good and he is faithful. God bless you guys. Um, I hope this has been encouraging and uh, see you next time.